All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do before you even log into Thinkorswim is to increase the memory that Thinkorswim can use. So we go over here, we click on this little wheel here in the bottom left corner, and its standard comes at 1.5 gigabytes. I would recommend increasing that to at least six. Now, you don't need to go crazy on this because Thinkorswim is not that intense when it comes to memory. It does not use a whole bunch of, you know, at most maybe three or four gigabytes in my experience. Uh, so I set it to six. You can set it to more, uh, but six should be sufficient. So once you increase the memory, go ahead and click save. Now, the second thing that you want to do is clean Thinkorswim up. When you first download it, it opens up with all the default settings. You have a whole bunch of stuff everywhere. All the tabs are full of junk. So you have to go through and clean it up. First thing you got to do is go over to uh, trade. And you see all these tabs here. You got all products, Forex, futures. Now, when you first get it, all this stuff is populated, one with stocks. So go ahead and highlight that and press enter. Go over to Forex Trader. A lot of times you'll have it where it'll be like six grids open with a whole bunch of stocks. Change that down to one grid. And then if there's a symbol in there, then highlight it, click it, enter it till it's black. You do that for futures and you can do it for Active Trader, but we I use Active Trader, so just don't worry about Active Trader. Do it for Pairs Trader. Then go over to the Analyze tab. And there's all these things in here too with stocks that you can go ahead and clean out, delete that. Probability analysis, already good. Economic data. Get all that cleaned up. All these symbols deleted and out of there. So nothing is running in the background, uh, taking up bandwidth. Yeah, also, another little thing about this is go to the Help tab and click Collect Garbage. That's going to clean up a little bit of the loose ends, some of the files. It's going to delete them. It's not end all, be all, fix all, but it does help it run a little smoother. So click that a bunch of times. Now also, when you first get it, you're gonna have all these widgets on the side. Uh, for example, I already deleted them, but you usually have all these, all these uh, widgets. And so, and you might have a bunch of them here. Delete all of them, all the ones you don't need, because you don't want anything extra running, okay? So go ahead, go in here and do delete gadget. Okay, until this is all cleaned up. I usually have this off to the side anyway, but still, you don't want anything extra running. You want this as low latency platform as you can get it. The third thing you're gonna wanna do is go into application settings because there's some settings in there that you have to change. So go up here to the top right to set up application settings. You open it up. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to system and change the quote speed to real time. As default, it's set to delayed and you do not want that, especially as a day trader, you want to have that real time. And I know some people are like, some people are like, yeah, duh, but you know, some people don't know this. So make sure you have real time enabled. Also in the active trader tab, you have the order submission rate. Default, this is set to like 1500. And what that does is stops you from sending orders really fast. And you don't really want that, especially if you want to do a click, 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 you know, three orders really fast to get in. This will reject your orders if you do it too fast. So I like to lower it down, not to zero because if your keyboard or your mouse glitches and does like get stuck on clicking and it just does infinity clicks, then it'll just send a bunch of orders and you're screwed, right? So setting it to three is low enough to where you can click really freaking fast and it will send those orders through, but it will not send an infinity orders through if something glitches, okay? So I wouldn't set it to zero, but set it to low. Okay, auto center, active trader price ladder every three seconds. I would recommend setting it to three. You can't go any lower to three. Uh, just set it to three. Well, now, as far as application settings, there's some stuff in here that you can mess with, like setting the, the color scheme to dark. I do recommend doing that. Set that to dark. You can set the font size to small, which I recommend if you don't have a big screen. When you have smaller font, you can have more on your screen, more room to work with. Let's see, what else? Uh, calculations, not nothing in there. Um, account, nothing in there. The next thing you're going to want to do is go into your hotkeys and set up your hotkeys. And that's also found in the application settings. Uh, you got to make sure it's clicked enabled here. Okay, if it's not clicked enabled, then you won't be able to use hotkeys. So click enable. And in here, you can set stuff for buy market. You can set stuff for sell market. You can set stuff for cancel. For example, my cancel button is the space bar. And these are really handy when you're trading. It's not the end all be all, but I would say you should have at least a couple hotkeys. Now, the fourth thing that you really want to set up is your charts. So I'm in the active trader tab and I have this set up to where I have my chart on the left here, my active trader window right here. I also like to have time and sales and level two. 
and you can click here and drag this over to change the width because you don't need your time and you don't need your time and sales so big over there so just you know customize it how you like but i sort of like it something like this maybe this a little bit tighter to have a little bit more of the chart now when you first get thinkorswim your chart's going to be a little goofy okay and the way you want to change it is going down here and clicking this button it looks like two arrows facing the opposite direction it's called change right expansion settings okay so click on that going over to general there's a whole bunch of different things in here such as synchronized crosshairs um that's not that important uh, the main thing here is if you want to see your trades on the chart you click show trades and it will show your trades on the chart a lot of people like that i don't like it because it makes your chart really messy uh, but if you want that it's in general there um there's a whole bunch of other stuff here that you can mess with uh price access nothing major here if you want do 10 percent up on the uh expansion area that can help you see a little bit more to the upside uh, sometimes i set it to 30. uh for the scale here i like to have it just fit study markers and fit patterns that helps your chart uh be a little bit more cleaner a little bit more easier to read over in time access this is very important you're gonna want you're gonna want your expansion area to the right to be set okay when it comes default it's zero and you want to set it to 100. Uh, the reason why is because when you scroll over to the right you only get to see as far as where the price has gone okay you can't go any further into the future so if you want to do a drawing into the future you can't because um, you can't go any further into the future now this is all drawn up let's do right click clear all drawings say i want to do a drawing into the future well i can't so we do that right expansion settings enter time access bars to the right i would do at least 100. and so that will allow me to see in the future and there i can draw uh my trend lines into the future and see in the future so that's a very important one to have so <clears throat> going back in here let's see what else um favorite time frames you can add different time frames that you want and delete them as you wish in here appearance this is a big one because when you first get it you're not going to have your green candles filled in and i don't like that and i don't think a lot of people like that so in here on the appearance click fill up also if you want your volume to show red and green depending on whether it was the uh, buying volume or selling volume whichever one was most um, you do color as the symbol ticks okay and so that will show you your green and your red volume bars um, there's also other things in here like uh, snap crosshairs to uh, the high to the low uh, if you want to set that the background uh, some people like white, but I like I like it dead black. I think it comes stock gray, uh, but I like mine dead black. And so, of course, a click click apply when you're done. Equities, nothing really much in there that you have to worry about. Options, of course, not really. Futures, forex, no. Um, in general, there's a few things you can play around with, and just play around with them. Click apply, see what they do. Uh, but I haven't really messed around too much in the uh, general tab. Price, uh, you can kind of look at my settings here if you want to copy. Uh, they're pretty good settings time access the key here is that right expansion area okay now another really important and quick thing is to set your auto send on okay if you're day trading you want to send orders like that you need to click your auto send so the easiest way to find it is in your active trader right here auto send also if you do get the dialog box you can click it in there to auto send and that will just so you can send your orders without having a confirmation okay but if you don't want that don't do it because it will send an order without double and triple checking with you and it, it can be dangerous but you do need that auto send especially if you want to do hockeys to buy and sell really fast another quick thing is if you want to add your pnl to the active trader chart you click here on this little wheel up here you customize and then you can do pnl on open and you will see in my videos that i have that set on my active trader so that when i get into a position i can see at what dollar amount or price stock price how much i will make if i sell there or how much i'll lose and some people like that some people don't but it's in that top settings wheel it's real tiny but it's there p l open add items over click okay you can drag any of these boxes around to where you like you can adjust the width of these uh depending on how you like it now if you want to add a study the quickest way is up here you have your style your drawings your studies studies is vwap moving averages they're all in here so you click studies add study so you can search it with all studies according to the name 
it's kind of tricky to get them to pop up and to get it right. But if you know the name of it, you can go into here. I only use view app. So I'd go down to V I'd click view app. Okay. And this is a daily, this is a, this is a intraday study. So I'm going in down to the one minute. Now I don't like having the upper and bottom bands of view app. So I'm going to right click on the actual view app line. I'm going to go in here to upper band. I'm going to go to uncheck show plot. Don't want to see that. And I don't want to see the lower, uh, lower band plot. Going back to view app, I don't like uh, pink, so I'm gonna go orange, and I like to see that line a little bit thicker, so I'm gonna go to four. Click apply, boom, now my view app is orange, it's thick, there's no upper and lower band. Pretty much at any time, if you wanna edit a drawing or a study, you just right click on it on the screen, edit or remove it. Uh, same with a uh, drawing. Your drawings are down here in the bottom right. And if you have a mouse that has the scrolling wheel that you can click, that will also pull up this menu, which is really handy. I recommend getting a mouse like that. Uh, so you got your pan, your, your pointer. Your pointer allows you to zoom in. It's kind of nice, but I usually just use the point, this thing, so I can drag around. Also, if you don't like the way this, you know, you don't like to zoom on this chart, you can go to these, these end axes or axes and click and drag, and you can change the... Uh, zoom and look of it. Also, you got your zoom here too. I'm trying to think what else. Um, there, there's a lot of things up here that you can mess with. Um, here's your studies. Again, there's, there's, there's a lot of redundant buttons in Thinkorswim and there's different ways to get to the same thing. Uh, style, that's, uh, you can change kind of this, a lot of the same things that you could within the appearance on the right expansion area. Uh, so if you want to change a few things in there and mess around with it, if you go into settings, it's just going to bring you right back to um, the settings here, right? Expansion area settings. Okay. And that's where you can change things. And the nice thing is if you find a style that you like, you can always save it by going into, uh, say you like the look of this chart and you want to save this and copy it to another chart, go into style, save style, type in a name. If you like the patterns and study set, click save, boom, it's saved. You can do that with studies as well save study set and then whatever studies you added you can save that and then if you open up another chart window say hey i want to detach this i'll detach this it'll pull up another chart window and i just want to chart so i'm going to get rid of the time and sales active trader level two and live news they just have a chart now i want to bring in that style that i just saved going right here click it boom loads it in i'm going to click that out now, if you want to link charts together, it's going to be this button right up here, symbol link. You can you have nine options to le link nine different stocks. And so if you have two or three different windows, it helps to link them a little bit. I'm trying to think what else. I think that's mainly it, guys. Uh, real short and sweet, those are the main ones I wanted to cover. There's a lot more to think or swim. And a lot of it, you just got to play around. It comes down to personal preference. Uh, so you just got to play around with it a little bit. Uh, but these are the main things that I wanted to share because I just think they're just vital. Okay, so if you enjoyed this video, let me know. If you have any questions, let me know. Of course, subscribe. We're going to be doing more videos like this in the future, and I will catch you later.